Think you know Canva? Think again. Let's be honest, most people who use Canva only use the basics, but Canva is packed with hidden features that can truly make your designs look like a pro created them and save you tons of time in the process. Though Canva's built-in templates can be helpful, you may get to a point where you wanna go beyond that and start creating some really unique and custom designs. So in this video, I'm pulling back the curtain to show you some of Canva's coolest tools that are secretly tucked away, ones that most people don't even know exist. Whether you use Canva for your business, school, social media, media or just for fun, these hacks are going to totally level up the way you design. And make sure you watch all the way to the end because I'm saving the very best tool for last. No, really, you're going to wonder how you ever lived without this. So let's dive in. All right, this first tool is going to allow us to turn a photo into a vector. So if you've ever wanted a photo that you have to look more like a graphic element than an actual photographic image, this is how we're going to do it. So I've added one of my brand photos here. I'm just going to select this photo and come up to where it says edit. And on the toolbar over to the left that pops up under the app section, I'm going to choose Tracer. The Tracer app is then going to automatically change my image into a vector element. And I can either choose if I want it in black and white or full color. The full color right now is in beta. So I'm going to show you what both of these look like. If I choose black and white and choose trace image, this is the vector that it came up with based on my photo. Now I have this threshold slider, which I can move to the left or right to decrease or increase the threshold. This is going to affect how my vector looks. If I increase the threshold, it's going to increase the dark space showing. And if I decrease, it's going to have more of that white space showing. So I can play around with this until I like the look of my vector. And then I can click add to design and continue designing with this inside my project. You'll see that now this is a vector. If I select it and come up to the top and choose the color option, I can then change around the color of this vector to go along with whatever I'm designing. Now let's go back to our photo and try it in full color. So here's my vector in full color. If I toggle off this little option that says auto color now, Numbers, it'll then bring up a slider that will allow me to choose how many colors I want to be included in this vector. So if I bring this slider down, it's going to have less and less colors, changing the look of the image. Once I'm happy with it, I can click to add it to my design. I'm going to make this a little larger so you can see it. And there it is with a total of 14 colors included. Now, if you're someone who's been using Canva and enjoys graphic design, you might want to look into selling digital products to make money online working from home. It can be a super simple side hustle, or you can grow an actual digital products business business to make a full-time income. Either way, Canva is an amazing tool to create different types of digital products. So if you think you might be interested in selling digital products, but just don't know where to start, or maybe you have already started and you just feel kind of stuck and don't know where to go from here, I've got a free 45 minute long masterclass. It's going to be super helpful for you. It's called Digital Product Powerhouse. And it's where I take a deep dive teaching through the four crucial steps that you'll absolutely need for starting and growing a consistently profitable digital products business. This is the teaching I wish I had had when I first started. So I want to make it available to you so you can have a shortcut and don't have to go around the mountain several times like I did learning by trial and error. So again, that's completely free for you to watch. I've got it linked in the description box below. Feel free to click over and watch that right after you get done here watching this video. All right, the next feature we're going to look at is one that's really awesome because it allows you to change and generate a unique background for a photo. We're probably all familiar with Canva's background remover at this point, but this one takes it a step further to let you generate your own unique background out of just whatever you're imagining. So here I've got an example photo. I'm going to click on that and then choose the edit option. And over on the tool menu to the left, you can see where it says background generator. Now we can see this has a little crown symbol in the bottom right corner, meaning that this is a tool that's only available for Canva Pro users. So if you're on the Canva free plan, you won't have access to this. But if you think you might be interested in trying Canva Pro to get access to some of these more premium features, I've got a link in the description box below. You can click and try out Canva Pro for free for 30 days to see if it would be a good fit for you. So we're going to click on background generator and then give it a prompt describing the scene, mood, or the lighting that we're imagining. So for this one, we've got our mug. I'm going to say it's sitting on a tree stump with a field of wildflowers in the background. I'm going to click generate and here it's given me four options that I can click through to see which one I like the best. I think all of these look really cool. So let's say I want to stick with this one. I'm going to click done and then I can continue editing. So I might want to even take it a step further and make this background look even more blurry to give it that really polished, professional, blurry background look. And I can do this by selecting this again, coming to the edit menu on the left and selecting adjust. And here I can see how I can adjust all different types of things in this photo, everything from 
from temperature to tint to brightness, contrast, highlights. There's so many different things I can do here. But before I start editing, I wanna click over on this top menu that says select area. I'm gonna click over to where it says background because I don't want to edit the coffee mug in the foreground. I only want to edit my background and make it more blurry. So when I select background, it's gonna automatically highlight the entire background, everything except my coffee mug. So with this background selected, I can then scroll down specifically under the texture area and use the sharpness slider to drag it to the left. And that makes it a little more blurry. I can play around with this also by changing things like the clarity or even this vignette slider, which is really fun. If I drag this to the left, it's going to add a white vignette around the edges and corners of my photo. I can slide this all the way to the right, which is going to add a darker vignette. And here I can see my finalized photo. I can even make changes to the coffee mug itself in the same way when I come back to adjust. And instead of selecting background, I'm going to select foreground. You can see my coffee mug is highlighted and then I can change things like the coloring on it, the temperature, how bright it's appearing and so on. All right, now let's say you have a photo you want to use, but the orientation that the photo was taken in and the aspect ratio doesn't quite fit into the size canvas or project that you're working on. So here I have a four to five size ratio for my Instagram post, but the photo I want to use doesn't quite expand all the way to the left. Typically what we would have to do in this instance is drag and resize to enlarge this until it would fill the whole canvas and move it around, but then the tops and bottoms are cropped off, which we don't want. So Canva has a really cool feature that's going to allow me to use AI to fill in the rest of the space and expand my photo so it fits the whole frame. To access this, I'm going to select my photo and come up to the little crop button and on the crop menu to the left, click over to expand. Now I can choose to do a free form expand, choose the whole page or a one to one aspect ratio. But for this, I want to just expand to my whole page. So I'm going to select that and click expand. So it's used its AI magic to expand my photo. And I have four different options again here on the left that I can click through to see which one looks the most natural and whichever one I'm happy with, I can stick with and click done. This is really useful when you're trying to fill up your whole page, especially if you want to use text. So let's say I wanted to input some wording here on the left side. Now the whole entire background is my photo and I could easily add some text on top. All right, let's move on to our next feature, which is the guides view. If you're finding that you're having trouble lining things up, positioning things correctly inside your project, it can be really helpful to have a view of these rulers and guides. So to get your guides to show up on your project, you're going to come up to file and click on settings and then add guides. You'll instantly see these little purple dotted lines appear on your project, which are the guides that you can use to line up elements and text as you're adding them to your page. Right now it's on 12 columns, but I could change this to three columns to a three by three grid, or even go to custom and input a custom amount of rows and columns and even change the spacing for the gap and the margin. But let's say I just want a three by three grid. I'm going to click add guides. Now I can see these purple lines on my page. So if I'm wanting to, let's say, add some elements and have them equally spaced three down and three across, I can add those and use these purple lines to make sure everything is evenly spaced across. Not only is this helpful for lining up elements and text, it can also be super helpful if you're creating a multi-page document like a workbook or a guide of some sort, and you want to make sure that your padding and your margins are consistent from one page to the next. Having these guides on can be so helpful. And then when you're done and you want to remove the purple lines, you'll just go back up to file, come back to settings and choose clear guides. And that'll bring those guides off, leaving you with your design. Now we're about to move on to another really fun tool. But first, if you are someone who's wanting to sell digital products, like I was just talking about, I've got one more free gift for you. That's going to help you on your journey. It's my complete digital product starter guide, and it has everything you need to know to get started growing your profitable digital products business. In the guide, I walk you through different tools you can use to create digital products, including Canva and others, sizing and aspect ratio information. So you're never stuck wondering what size project you should create for a certain type of digital product. We talk about where to source elements like graphic assets, icons, illustrations, fonts, and so much more. So that's completely free. I have that linked in the description box below as well. So definitely grab that to get started on your digital products journey. Okay. The next tool we're going to look at is within Canva's brand kit. So if you have Canva pro, you can come over on the left menu from the home page to where it says brand. And this is where you can build out different brand kits, including fonts, color schemes, logos, images, photos. So you can have quick access to these when you're inside the Canva editor. So one really amazing thing you can do when you're here under your photos section within the brand kit is you can generate more unique photos for your brand. So instead of just using generic stock photos, the same ones that everyone else is using from the Canva element library, you can use Canva's AI to generate new ones specifically based on a style that 
that you like from an existing image that you have. So these are some stock images that I have uploaded into my brand kit and I'm gonna generate a new one, let's say for a podcast setup. I'm gonna go to the photo that I like that I wanna base this new one off of and click the three dots. And then I'm gonna choose generate from photo. And I wanna give it a prompt to describe what type of photo I want it to generate for me. So I might say a podcast setup with a mic, camera and computer. And then I'm going to click generate. And here it's given me four different options. I can click on these and look through them to see which one I like the best. And you can see how this style is very similar to the original style reference photo that I chose from the light and airy look of it. It's pulling in some of those pinks and greens that were in that original photo. And when I find one that I like, I can click to add it to my brand kit. Another really cool tool inside of this brand kit is when I go back to the three dots over a specific image, I can choose the extract color palette option. This will take the colors that are in that image and automatically create a new color palette for me inside this brand kit based on that photo. So you can see it's pulled these specific colors here and I can see the specific hex codes as well in case I need to use those. But I can do this for any images that I have. So again, coming to a different one, choosing extract color palette, and here it's given me those really pretty green colors from the plant photo. And I can do this several different times, creating different color palettes within my brand kit so that when I go to use them inside the editor, they'll be right there quick and easy. All right, next up is one of my absolute favorites. This one's going to allow us to add some fun textures to our designs. So let's say I have this design. I'm gonna use this on Instagram as a little promo for a baking class. If I wanted to add a texture to this, I could come over to the elements library and search for my texture here, but I am much prefer this little hidden feature. When I select the photo and click edit, I'm gonna come down again under the app section to where it says texture. Now this is gonna pull up lots of different types of textures I can add, everything from paper textures to paint to VHS, grit, film grain, grunge, so many different choices here. But let's say I wanna add something from this grit section. I'm gonna click to see all. And when I click on one to add it, you can see how it's going to apply it to my background photo here. So we've got this sort of grainy gradient here and I can continue editing the way this looks with the different blend modes offered here. I can scale it up, rotate it, and even increase or decrease the opacity to change how drastic the effect is. Maybe I want to try a paper texture so I could do this worn paper look that makes it look like a piece of paper that's been folded up for a while. Maybe I want to try this subtle linen look. So again, this is just a super fun feature to play around with. And adding textures like this to designs, whether it be for social media or on a digital product that you're going to be selling, really levels up the visual appeal and the professionalism of it. All right, we've made it to my absolute favorite feature that we're talking about today, and this is Canva's color wheel. I'll have the link for this in the description box below, but this is an amazing tool that Canva provides when you're just not sure what colors you need to use, whether you're trying to come up with a color palette for your branding or for your digital products, this is where you can come to get colors that absolutely work together without a doubt. So when using this color wheel, your first step is to pick the color you wanna base it on. So we've got this really vibrant blue picked out, and next we can choose the type of color combination we want it to give us. So right now it's on complementary. You can see that our blue is straight across the wheel from this red color. These two colors are called complementary colors because they're directly across from each other on the color wheel. But if I didn't want complementary, I could change this to something like analogous, which gives me three different colors that are right there in a row on the wheel. I could try something like triadic, which is gonna give me the three colors that are evenly spaced across from each other. There are lots of different color combinations you can play around with here. And you can always click and drag on the wheel too to change this around and see what colors would work together and they stay evenly spaced as you're dragging around the wheel. When you find a color palette you like, you can just click to export that palette or you can choose this create a graphic button which will take you into Canva's templates library and show you templates that are already created that use that specific color palette. If you wanna get this narrowed down even further, if you're looking for a template for something very specific, you can choose the filters and then choose which category you want. So maybe I want to limit this only to Instagram story size posts. I can choose the style. So maybe I want something really playful and I can continue filtering by things like theme, language, feature, grade, subject, topic, so many different filters. And when I click apply, it's going to show me the templates that only fit in with the filters that I chose. So I hope you found these Canva features super helpful. Don't forget to click the links below to hop over and watch that free 45 minute digital products masterclass and also to grab your free digital product starter guide. Happy designing. We already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know.